Okay, so here's the backstory. I recently went on a trip to Japan, visited some places, ate some weird food, checked out some games, and of course checked out what I can get my hands on for my second rig. Unfortunately, they had a one or two GPU buying limit in all of the stores I went to. But luckily, the ASRock H110 DTC Pro Plus just landed in their stores, which inspired me to try my luck in building a 13 GPU mining rig. Due to scarcity of supplies here in the Philippines as well, I was only able to get my hands on 6 GPUs. GTX 1070s. Later on, I'll show you in the video. First things first, the mining rack. My main problem is where I'll be placing my rig. It's on the second floor of our house and it can get really, really hot, especially from noontime till the afternoon. I conceptualize a rack where it can address the temp issues of a 13 GPU mining rig without breaking the bank from buying those expensive high static pressure fans. This fan is really cheap and consumes 80 watts of electricity when set at low. So if you're wondering how I was able to um, transport the, the rig, so this is how I did it. Pretty cool, right? Next up, the main components. Starting with this motherboard right here, the ASRock H110 Pro BTC Plus, fresh from Japan. I'll be powering half of the rig with a Leadex Superflower 1200 Watt Platinum ESU. These are my Palette GTX 1070 jet streams, two 8GB RAM sticks. Now I know people might say 16GB in one rig is overkill but we'll see. I also have the G4560 bought in Japan, 128 SSD, some risers, and I also bought this really cheap open case board for my motherboard. Before buying this motherboard, it took me a while because there weren't many videos or reviews of it online. I wasn't sure if it was worth the investment, but I decided to buy it anyway. The idea of running 13 GPUs all at once in one motherboard is really something else. And there we have it. 1 PCIe 3.0 by 16 and 12 PCIe 2.0 slots. One concern I'm already having is how close these PCIe slots are to each other. It may cause some problems later on, especially when I've connected all 13 GPUs in the motherboard. Right now, I only have 6 so not much concern yet. Now I don't have a background in IT, not well experienced with putting it together a rig and the most nerve wracking part for me is installing the CPU. One mistake and you can break two components instantly. My advice, learn how to put it together properly. Seriously. Another advice is buying this open-ended cable tie. Really cheap and can help you go a long way in terms of cable management. So I've already installed the fan of my CPU and will try to make use of this open case. Okay, when I bought this, I was told it was universal but it seems I can only fit two screws. One here and another there. That's about it. Nothing else. No screws, slots there. Ah, whatever. Should be fine. Okay, so I've found another use for the board. I can use it to hold my SSD. I was planning on tying it somewhere, but I think this is an even better plan. Nice and tight. Now another cool thing about this motherboard is that it has its own power and reset buttons. No more shorting it with the screwdriver to power it up. Okay, so time to release the guns. Pallet. GTX 1070 Jetstream, 8GB. One thing I immediately notice is how thick the heat sinks on this GPUs are. See that? I'm estimating about 2.5 to 3 inches in thickness. A minor issue that I saw after taking out protective stickers is how there are a couple of lines or a number of lines on the panels there. So after trying to fit the video cards on the rack, I had to make some minor adjustments. The video cards would originally be sitting too high and then the wooden support underneath them would be too far apart. So it's just a minor adjustment. As you can see, I've already loaded all of the video cards on the rack. Now I've watched a couple of videos where they start with the motherboard, power supply, the riser cards, and the video cards. 
But me, I like to install the PSU at the latter part. Here I'm showing you that I've already secured the motherboard on the rack. So I've already added the power supply unit on the rack. Also secured it using the open-ended cable ties. So I had to readjust the power supply so that the cables can reach the risers and the video cards. I've also used up all of the slots of the power supply unit. Hopefully it's not gonna go high temps on me all the time. My apologies as I have to skip a lot of the steps. Um, I'm filming this on my own and it's really hard to work on the rig as well as hold the camera at the same time. But as you can see I've already powered up the rig. I'm at the bias settings right now. From what I've read and watched, there should be an option where you can choose mining mode for your motherboard, but I can't seem to find it anywhere here in the bias. So surprisingly, not much to change in the bias section. So what I just did is I rebooted it and then plugged in my USB stick where my Windows installer is and then currently it's installing windows right now this might take a while so i'm just gonna skip this part here so even windows is telling me that it's gonna take a while finally we've successfully installed windows first i'm going to install a couple of important things like the graphics driver gpu z msi afterburner and ewbf miner I plan on mining Zcash with stock settings for the first 24 hours just to break in these cards and see how well they'll perform. I haven't installed the graphics driver yet but as you can see Windows has detected all of the graphic cards. Very nice. Still can't catch a break with the memory chip lottery though. 6 GPUs with Micron chips. All Micron chips. Ah, oh well. Now I know I said I was going to mine Zcash but I wanted to see first how well it mines Ethereum just for benchmark purposes. So on stock settings I'm getting somewhere between 26.4 to 26.5 mega hashes per second. Hmm, not bad. Maybe I should give it a couple more rounds. So still 26, 26.2, 26.6. Maybe la another one. Yeah, still the same. And now on Zcash, as you can see, I'm getting 2,500 solutions combined um, with one issue on GPU zero. I don't know why it's just producing 92 watt output and 373 solutions compared to the others. Hmm, there might be an issue there. So I was able to find out the problem, it was a riser issue, I just immediately changed it and the problem was solved. That pretty much sums up the first part of my 13 hybrid GPU rig build. I'm still waiting for 7 AMD cards to ship and for me to complete my build. Do stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I'll also try to come up with a video showing my first rig. It's composed of 5 GTX 1080 Ti's and 1 GTX 1070. You might be interested in the details such as power output and hash rates of this rig. What I failed to mention was that during the time I was working on the first half of the 13 GPU build, it was the eve of my birthday. I celebrated with a bottle of milk beer. The only bottle I could find in the fridge. So, lucky me, right? Okay, so it's the morning. Just the beer again. Perfect. And... Mm, it's blue. First red, the second one. Two temps. Two hmm. so temps. Hash rates are still at 2,500, 2,066. Two the temps, everything else is under 60 except for GPU 1.
So GPU one is this one. Maybe it has something to do with the heat sink or the GPU absorbing most of the heat emitted by the other GPU cards. I'll try to see how I can give this card a better cooling option. So I promise this is the end of this 10 minute video. I hope you liked it and I hope you find it very very helpful. Please give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe or let me know in the comment section below if you are interested. My boss just stepped in the room. So I think I have to say goodbye to my fellow miners. Thank you so much for watching. Happy mining.